Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. McDonough. Thanks for your conversation and meeting yesterday. As I mentioned, um, I'm proudly serving the state with more vets per capita any state in the country. <laughs> Joe, it's true, sorry. Um, West Virginia's close, patriotic communities, both of ours. Um, and I, uh, I've reached out to a number of our veterans for questions that they can ask you, and I got a lot, of course. And I would say that you could boil them down to a, a couple things. They want a secretary who understands what it means to serve, who will vigorously tackle the benefit and health care challenges facing them, and who listens, who doesn't prioritize the needs of, say, a veteran in Los Angeles or a big city over the needs of those in rural communities like Utiavik or Kotzebue, who works with Congress on finding solutions, not politicizing, and in the spirit of a great Marine, former constituent of mine, unfortunately we lost him last year, Marine Gunnery Sergeant Cajun Bob Toms from Wasilla, Alaska, six Purple Hearts on the cover of Life magazine for his Silver Star Valiant heroic efforts during Vietnam. In the confirmation of Secretary Shulkin, he had asked a question of saying he simply wants a VA secretary who, quote, will kick ass and take names. So what do you say to my veterans on these issues? And can you take a minute, I know you do with Senator Tillis, to speak directly to the legitimate concerns that Alaska veterans have raised who feel as though military experience is the prerequisite for the VA secretary to understand and have a baseline understanding of their needs, their service, their experience. So if you can address all those, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Senator. And uh, I appreciate um, the, the question and I appreciate the concern at the heart of uh, the question about uh, who's best prepared to be VA secretary. I'm not a gunnery sergeant but I'm a fighter and I'm relentless. Anybody who's worked with me knows that. Two, I know how the government works and importantly, I know when and how it doesn't work. And I will fight relentlessly to ensure that it works for our vets. So I think my constituents, my veterans, their families, they want to know, will you have their back? I've spent the last 20 years involved in decisions about when and where, as a staff person, I'm not going to overstate my role, but as a staff person, when and where our men and women go to fight. And I've gone and seen and met and witnessed what they're doing and I've gone to visit them when they're injured here at home. And I have seen and internalized their excellence. And I know that the basic requirement of a VA secretary is to have their back to ensure that I will fight like hell to take as good a care of them as they've taken of us. So in the immortal words of Cajun Bob, you will kick ass and take kick ass and take names on behalf of our veterans. Yes, sir. That's important. They need to know it. Yes, sir. Uh, I also want to get your commitment, first year of your tenure, to get up to Alaska, meet with my veterans, see our state, see the challenges. Can I get your commitment on that? You've got that commitment. Can I get your commitment? You know, you, if confirmed, you're going to be running a big bureaucracy. Can I get your commitment to? kind of do a VFR direct with all of us on this committee. When we have issues, we can go directly to you, not through the 18 layers of bureaucracy to... Yes, you have that commitment. Let me ask one final question. Um, again, these were concerns from my veterans. Uh, you served in the Obama administration. My first two years in the Senate were the last two years of the Obama administration. A lot of the issues I was dealing with were some of the big VA problems. The CHOICE program, which in my state, the implementation was an utter disaster. It actually collapsed the system in Alaska. 
I mean, total disaster. The Phoenix wait time scandal. What did you learn from these? And do you think that experience is going to help you? Does that, is that a liability, given your background? And um, can you assure my veterans that we're not going to go back to those days, which I don't think anyone on this committee thinks were good days for our veterans. We've made a lot of progress since that, and we've made a lot of progress back home in Alaska, particularly as it relates to putting together Alaska plan that got us out of the hole, the choice program put us in. Thank you, Senator. The, the lifeblood of a uh, well-run, well-functioning organization or agency is timely, accurate information. That was not the case in Phoenix. The lifeblood of a well-run organization is accountability. Accountability happened in Phoenix, but it was slow. You all have subsequently changed the statute to make that easier, and it won't ever happen again. At the end of the day, the principle that will inform my leadership of the VA, if I'm confirmed, is whether any decision increases access and improves outcomes for our vets. That is what we owe the vets. That is what my commitment to you, to the VSOs, and to them, and to the president, is that I will deliver if confirmed as secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 